Okay then peeps, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Taking another look at one of the Gigabyte Z87 boards. Now this is the uh, Z87X overclock. This is probably going to be a board that a lot of you are going to be looking at. I found the price out for this day, although I've been sworn to secrecy, I'm not allowed to tell you. But this board, there's two overclock boards. There's going to be this one and then a much higher uh, range one. This one uh, is incredibly aggressively priced. Um, and I was uh, actually quite shocked. It's an overclock board that you, you don't need to be a millionaire to buy. Uh, the other one is going to be much more expensive. Uh, they've essentially uh, stripped this one back. The other one is going to have extra features and stuff in it. Uh, more power phases and stuff will probably get you you know in the grander scheme of things a higher overclock if you were you know freezing and all that kind of stuff but this will do the majority of people proud especially for the money obviously we've not tested it or anything yet uh, and uh, I do have to go careful again about stuff that I'm saying but I will try my best to uh, stand as close to the fire as I possibly can do now uh, if you've not seen the other video that I did then I have got another Z87 board um, live and it's the uh, d3 hp that's an even uh, a slightly lower price board than this it's one of the more kind of entry black boards that they're going to be doing uh, but again it still might be worth a look for you to see what's excuse me to see what's coming uh, the nice thing to see is that we have uh, got the uh, black and orange overclock uh, uh, styling back i was a big fan of this when uh, the original x58 overclock come out i think they kind of Lost their way a little bit after that, but I'm hoping with these, especially when I get to start testing and playing with these, that they, um, it's going to perform as well as it looks. Now, there are a lot of features in and around the board uh, that uh, I'm kind of, I'm not allowed to say too much about, and it is kind of difficult because I know everyone's going to be going, like, well, you should just tell us, but uh, I have to stick to these things guys or I wouldn't even be able to I wouldn't even be given the chance to give you this early look in the first place now what we'll do is I will pick the board up and I will show you around and about the heat sink down on what I will still call the um, south bridge but the chipset down here is uh, quite thick and by thick I mean it's quite a, a lump of material there like a big lump of alley but without looking too brash, it's quite a, uh, a, a simple design. I quite like that. I do like this bit of uh, what I'm going to say is anodized alley down the middle. Does look quite nice. And if we look at the other heat sink while we're talking heat sinks, this is the one covering uh, like the power phases and MOSFETs and stuff. Not as massive as you may expect for an overclocked board. The more expensive board does have a, uh, it does come out and round and it's got like walking and all that kind of stuff in it. But as I've said to you, this is going to be really aggressively priced. Um, and I, I can't say much more other than that, but there was someone on Facebook that said about, you know, the price that this was going to be coming in at and they were pretty much spot on. Um, so we've got that. So we were looking at the heat sinks now. Next thing that we'll look at is. PCI Expresses, we can see that we've got four PCI Express slots, two PCIEs, and then there is a PCI Express one. Now if, I'm, if I look, the, the top one is wired 16, the others are wired 8. How that relates with how many PCI Express lanes we've got on the chipset, we don't know, or rather I can't say, but that's just the way the board is wired. What happens when you, if you were to populate all these slots, I don't know, or rather, like I said, I can't say. Um, other things to point out, we do have a six pin PCI Express connector on the board here. This will be if you were to populate all the cards, just to give yourself a little bit of extra juice uh, to go into the actual graphics card itself from the board, because obviously graphics cards do get power from the slot, as well as from the PCI Express connectors that are plugged into it. Talking about power connectors, there is at the top here an 8 pin and a 4 pin. 24 pin is obviously down the side, but we're kind of used to all that kind of stuff anyway. If we go round to the back, we have two, four, six USB 3s. There's two USB 2s at this end. There's a button here, which again I'm not allowed to say too much to you about at the moment. Go on, focus. This bit, please. Or don't then. 
Um, but I can say this button is to do with uh, overclocking and it's not a CMOS clear button. Uh, we've got PS2 in a random place here, which I find quite amusing. Full sized uh, display port, HDMI, and then we've got uh, optical connection here. Gigabit uh, LAN, and then we've got um, HD audio there. Now, if we look, get it in there, we've got system fan one here. CPU fan up there, CPU optional fan there. I'm looking round because this is the first time I've seen it. We've got system fan, oh that says system fan 5. So we've obviously got lots of other ones to find. Now that's 4 pin, that's 4 pin, that's 4 pin. That was 3 pin. Now I'm not seeing any more fans around that area. So if we come down to the bottom, we've got system fan there which is a 4 pin. System fan there, which is 4 pin. System fan there, which is 4 pin. So we've got system fan 2, 3, 4, 5, and that was system fan 1. System fan 5 is the only 3 pin that I'm seeing. Now, up in this corner, we have, uh, we've got some dip switches here. I know that there's a, a range of these buttons here that they do. One of them you can press, and it, uh, from the rig being off, it's a boot to BIOS button. I think that's a brilliant little uh, switch and we've got, uh, uh, I think one of them's for uh, switching the BIOS, as in switching which BIOS you want to run from, one's power, I think that's the power switch, and then we've got a reset switch and there's some other switches there as well. One thing that we can see is we've got a uh, post, LED post readout there, which is also really great when you're overclocking to be able to work out, you know, why your rig's freezing and, you know, what bit's unstable and stopping it, holding it back. USB 3 there. We look at these switches. This one says tag, that says turbo, that one says gear. And then we've got plus, minus, plus, and minus. You can obviously uh, bump multipliers and uh, the actual base clock itself, like the, the original, like, um, uh, like the original megahertz before the multiplier and then the, the gear just with older ones it, it selected between like uh, a tenth of a megahertz, a third of a megahertz, half a megahertz and a whole megahertz. I don't know what it's going to be on this board till I actually get a chance to play with it. Uh, further around here we've got, uh, this says it's a TGR switch, this is apparently a BIOS switch, this says SB switch but then we've got um, on both all of these points here and here, there are voltage readouts, and that says VDIM, PCHV, VSA, VAHG, VIDA, VIDO, uh, V ring, V core, V core, sorry, V core three, V core two, V core one, V core zero, and then V ring. So there's lots of uh, different voltage points you can uh, take readings from there which is obviously going to be really good. I don't know whether they're both voltage or whether one of them might be temperatures, I don't know. Again, until I start playing with this, I really can't tell you all the ifs, ands, or buts. Around the side, we do have six SATA connectors. Again, can't really say too much about uh, SATA 3 or SATA 2, but I'm sure you can work it out. Quite randomly, to um, onboard uh, and by on board, I mean like it's going to be on the inside. USBs could be great for overclockers that just want to leave them in there and stuff. But again, you know, when we uh, get round to using the system and reviewing the system, we will give you more info. Something I've just noticed down here is we've got a second USB 3 internal, USB uh, 2 internals there front panel audio, again, because you are obviously going to get a lot of people using this as their main rig board, so they do need to cram other stuff in and not just benchmark stuff. Uh, now, oh, a little bit further forward, Tom, there we go. What we'll do is I will uh, I will give you a good look around the um, board. and then you can uh, pause and all that kind of stuff if you want to look at it in depth. I'm just going to move the board around. Like I said, you can pause it if you want to look at anything in more detail.
I know we've been here before, but I'm just trying to cover everything. In fact, let's have a look at it from this side. But, if I zoom out again, I've probably said too much already. I'm almost positive I'm going to get a telling off next week. But, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. I'm going to get these videos rendered and get them up for you ASAP. But, for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. <laughs>